Welcome to YouTubers Love Excel number 21. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link and download the workbook, YouTubers Love Excel 17 to 21. Hey, in 21, someone asked about Solver. Now, I don't know much about Solver. I did some basic linear algebra formulas, but Solver can do a lot more than linear algebra. So I can really only show you a silly little example here, but I can show you what I know. Uh, first, in 2007 and 2003, you have to add solver add-ins. And as always, there's notes up at the top of these sheets, so you can go look at those notes. But in 2003, you got to go to Tools, Add-ins, and then click the uh, solver. In 2007, you have to click on the Office Orb button, and then Excel Options, and then go to Add-in. Down right here, there's Excel Add-ins. Click Go and then click Solver Add, and then click OK. Without a ribbon at the end, there is Analysis, and you have Solver. You can also add in the formulas where inputs can change. Hey, uh, let's see how to do But the point is you have to set up um, your input, formula input variables, and you have to have a variable that's going to be used by a bunch of uh, input variables. Not only that, but constraints like how much, what's the maximum amount to spend What's the maximum uh, square footage for a product? Those also have to be based on uh, these variables here. These are called by changing values in Solver. These are the x values that would x sub 1, x sub 2 that you would use in linear algebra. So let's see. This is a, a garden sale. We have a cactus pot and a rose pot. Uh, square feet, uh, this one uses 3, this one uses 2. Uh, the maximum square feet that we have available is 90. Uh, here's the selling price, cost, and profit for each. And so we have to figure out uh, all the totals, total square feet, total selling cost, total cost, total profit, and then add those all up for, for both products. Here's our constraints. We, we have a um, maximum of 90 feet, the maximum amount we can spend. There's a maximum demand for the uh, rose pot. That's shouldn't say tools, that should say rows pot. And minimum number to, of order. So we're going to build our formulas, get our totals, and then it, using Solver we'll tell it uh, what we want to optimize, what we want to maximize, and what these constraints are. And it'll figure it out for us. All right, let's go down to total square feet. I'm going to highlight both of those cells. And in the light colored cell, I'm going to say equals this right here times this right here. That formula is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 above times 2 above. So when I control enter, it puts the right formula in both cells. You click in the cell, hit F2, you can see that it got the right ones. Overall, um, square footage, I'm going to click in this cell and Alt equals. Now if you don't like it adding up that blank cell there, if you could we can just highlight the right cells, which would be that right there, control, enter. Now, total selling price, I've set this up, so I'm going to, all the variables are in the same order as we're calculating the totals down here. So in the light colored cell up at the top, I'm going to say equals, and total selling price, that one there, which is 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 above, times... And then my number uh, of items ordered, and I'm going to lock it going down, F4 twice. And that is so that it's locked going down, so that it, as it multiplies each time, selling price, cost, profit, we'll get the right sales here. But when it copies over to this column, that column reference, the dollar sign in front of the C, is not locked, so it'll move to the next number. Control Enter. Click in the last cell and F2. You can see that it got the right formula. Now I'm going to add all these up. I'm going to click in this cell, Control S, uh, Control C for copy, and then I'm going to highlight all these cells at once. And it's the light colored cell at the top. I'm going to Control V. If you don't believe it, click in that cell and hit F2. Now we have what we want. We have a bunch of totals, some constraints. We can click on the cell for total profit, which is this one right here, and go get our solver data. Solver in uh, 2003, you go to the data. Menu, Solver. I'm going to click on Solver. Target cell. That's what we want to optimize and whether we want to max or min. I'm going to make sure that it got F25. It picked that up because my cell was, um, uh-oh, I see this is all still here. 
Well, now it's not there. Look at that. I just got rid of it. Now, the uh, target cell is what we want to optimize. M max is what we want. By changing cells, these are the x values in, in algebra, linear algebra. But here's our number of items order. That's what we want here. So we highlight those two cells. Those are uh, the values that they're going to change to get our uh, uh, maximum value. Notice that total profit, that's what we want to maximize. It's based on these inputs. Same with one of our constraints, which is going to be max to spend. When we get, here's the cost right here, we're going to have to tell one of our constraints that that's the cell for total cost. But that is also based on the number of items. So that's kind of how all this works. The by changing cells are the X values, the, the change in values that Excel is going to change in this optimization process. Now, options. Uh, I'm going to click on that and then click, make sure it says Assume Linear Model. Click OK. And then I'm going to come over here, and this is the constraints areas. And this is where um, you need to add your constraints, like ma um, maximum amount to spend. You have to click the Add button, and it opens a new dialog box. And this dialog box is going to be kind of tricky. After we have a bunch of them to create, and we're going to click Add, Add, Add. And uh, then we'll click OK. So the first one, and I'm going to do this kind of just linearly, I'm going to say, hey, this one right here, that, and I'm going to click the drop down, says needs to be an integer. And, and a lot of times you really have to think carefully about all the constraints in advance. So sometimes it's, there's a lot of setup for this. Then I'm going to click Add. Now, this cell right here also has to be greater than or equal to, since this is the number order for cactus pot, it has to be greater than or equal to, and there's our constraint, 0. Click Add. Now, there's no max for this, uh, so we don't need to add that. But now we need to go to this one. And this one also needs to be an integer. Boop. Add. And then this one also needs to be greater than or equal to 0. Add. And then this one also has a special situation. It has to be less than or equal to our maximum demand for rose pot. And then click Add. Now we need to go down and um, we have a couple of the parameters, the square feet available. So notice our formula is calculating square feet. So I'm going to click there. Remember, that's based on these number of items purchased, which is the variable that Excel is going to change to get an optimal maximum value. That right there has to be less than or equal to, and I have to click on my constraint, 90. Click Add. Now the next thing we have to do is we have one more um, spending. So we go to our cost, boop, and that has to be less than or equal to, and our uh, cell right there. Notice uh, these don't have to be integers because uh, these have to be integers because they're whole values. We order one or two, not some decimal in between. I'm going to click Add, and then I'm going to click OK. This is where it gets a little tricky. It's crazy. I don't like this. I have to click Cancel now. I could have clicked OK just a moment ago. But now it, it's expecting I put something in there, and it said, hey, there's a bunch of zero values. So now I have to click Cancel. It doesn't click cancel all the constraints that I have. They're all listed right there. So that's it. If you get them all right, um, get all these constraints right, uh, it's pretty simple. You click Solve. <laughs> And it gives you some solution. There's, it says four items of these and 39 of these will give us the maximum total profit. Now, the answer report, these two are not really relevant for linear. But if you click the answer report, there's something interesting. I'm going to keep the solver solution, which means it'll keep it there. I'm going to click OK. Zoop. There's my answer report. And I'm going to highlight everything because you guys can look at the whole sheet maximize, but I can't. I'm going to have to do a little trickery here to fit this on the screen. Um, the cool thing is, is it does give you a report. There's the overall profits, uh, original value. That was the final value. So it compares what it started with and what it got. Here's the original value for number of cactus pots, original value for rose pots, and what we ended up with. And those were, the, well, you could just guess back and forth, but what Solver does is it does all that iteration for you. Now, Slack and binding. We need to talk about those. Slack means how much room is there left to wiggle. You could see for a total cost, our total cost came out to be uh, 
262 so that meant there was $113 under that constraint. When it says slack of 113, that means you can play around with that variable. Now, this zero means that there was no slack. We hit the limit, and you can go through and look at those. Hey, all right, that's a little bit about Solver. We'll see you next. YouTuber, love Excel.